So if you watched my previous video on this Mac Pro, then you know that it shipped with nine terabytes of hard drives. It came with a four terabyte, two two terabyte hard drives and a one terabyte hard drive. Now, one of those two terabyte hard drives was defective, so I was able to get a refund from the seller and I have since replaced it with my own two terabyte hard drive that I had around. I also took out the one terabyte hard drive and replaced it with a one terabyte SSD that you can see in the background running the Blackmagic disk speed test. Now, this isn't a particularly fast SSD. It's only getting about 250 megabytes per second read and write. So what we're gonna do today is install these PCIe NVMe SSDs in this Mac Pro to try and get those read write speeds quite a bit higher. Now, while we're opening up the inside of this machine, I'm also going to be putting this in. This is a PCIe USB 3.0 adapter because this Mac Pro is from 2010, so all of its USB ports are 2.0, so this is going to bring us a little bit more modernity in the form of USB 3. Now, one thing to keep in mind with this particular adapter is this is designed to work without auxiliary power. So a lot of these USB 3 expansion cards do require some form of external power from within your computer, but because I don't wanna wire a Molex connector or a 15 pin into the power supply of the Mac Pro where I have already wired in external PCIe power for my graphics card, we just went with one of these cards which does not require power, but does have some limitations. On its own, each of these is a full USB 3 port that provides a full power connection. However, if you use more than one of these for a full power device, such as an external hard drive, uh, it does not quite have enough power to supply that. So you can use one, like a USB laptop hard drive just fine, but more than one of those, you're gonna run into power delivery issues. Now, once I get all of my storage configured, I think we're probably gonna switch it over to Mojave with that R9 290X graphics card, which by the way is not the final graphics, it will be upgraded beyond that. But just as a temporary placeholder so we can get Mojave on this thing, you need to have a metal supported graphics card, which the R9 290X is. So depending on the success that I have with this configuration, I may put the R9 290X back in and upgrade this thing to Mojave, but Frankly, I have not done really any preparation for this. I haven't installed anything on these SSDs and sort of figured out everything that I need to do for this video. I'm going to be doing it on camera, so I hope it works. Let's get into it and open this machine up. So to start with, I reformatted both SSDs with the intention of creating a RAID 0 array with them. I had pulled one crucial 500 gigabyte NVMe SSD from the now sold 2013 Mac Pro, and I purchased another to match it. Those will of course be linked in the description down below. I went through the very handy RAID assistant built into disk utility and had my RAID array configured in seconds. Next, I booted into Internet Recovery to attempt to install High Sierra on my new RAID drive. However, what I found is that you cannot actually install a fresh copy of macOS, either High Sierra or Mojave, onto a RAID array. You used to be able to do this back in Sierra, which is why I thought this would work, but as it turns out, you can't. Now there is a workaround. What you can do is clone your current hard drive, or I should say your current installation, which is in this case on an SSD. You can clone that onto the RAID array and it will boot up just fine. However, I'm a little bit hesitant to do this because as my research on some forums has shown, apparently there are issues with crashing when the operating system updates. So at this point, I've got to rethink my hard drive strategy. So basically what we've got up here is our RAID array that we just created that we can install a bootable, or at least a reliable bootable macOS version on. We've got the partition of the one terabyte SATA SSD, as well as the bootcamp partition, the four terabyte HDD, and down here are the two two terabyte hard drives. So what I think I'm gonna do is break this RAID array back into two individual 500 gigabyte SSDs. On one of those SSDs, I'm going to install macOS. 
Now the other one could get a little bit tricky. So from what I've seen, it can be very difficult to get bootcamp installed on an external disk. So you guys all just watched me install these SSDs and they are very much internal insofar as they are inside the Mac Pro. However, you'll notice that on the desktop, both before and after we created this RAID array, they're showing up as external disks. Essentially, the Mac Pro is configured to have six internal hard drive connections. There are the four drive bays, and then there are two more that are used for optical drives, or you can use them for hard drives if you want, but basically a total of six internal drive bays. Once you install something like a PCIe to NVMe adapter, like I have, these are going to show up as external. This isn't to say that there's going to be a huge bottleneck, they're still running over a PCIe connection, so they're gonna be very fast, but macOS is going to recognize them as external. So this isn't a problem for macOS. macOS doesn't care if you install it on an external volume, it's gonna boot up just fine, and I'll set it to be the default boot device for this thing, and we'll be on our way. However, there might be some trickiness when it comes to installing bootcamp I might have to leave it on the SATA SSD that I have in here. I don't know, we'll figure it out. So what I'm gonna do right now is break up the RAID array and install macOS on one of the 500 gigabyte solid state drives. It wasn't so simple though. Hi Sierra just would not install on the NVMe SSD. Regardless of if I was going through the existing copy of Hi Sierra, internet recovery, formatting an APFS or macOS extended journal, it just wouldn't install at all. So I decided I would just go ahead and get this machine upgraded to Mojave. I put the R9290X back in and upgraded the SATA SSD to Mojave. Then from that SSD, I installed Mojave to the NVMe drive and booted off of that. Yes, it's actually installing. Oh, thank goodness. Oh. So just as I was about to lose hope that I wouldn't be able to get macOS onto one of these NVMe SSDs, it finally worked. So there were some downsides and I'll get to those in just a minute, but as you can see over here, we're getting over 900 megabytes per second write and getting close to 1500 megabytes per second read speeds on this NVMe SSD. Now, obviously, if you were to put something like a 970 Pro in this, you could get faster read write speeds, but I think that this offers a pretty good performance per dollar, given that it was only like 65 bucks for this SSD. And while I would have liked to have it in RAID 0, this is a pretty stable way to run these speeds, and there's no way that you could get anywhere near this kind of performance from anything in a SATA drive bay on one of these older machines. So. Overall, I think this was very successful. However, there were some drawbacks. I have actually pulled the other SSD out of this machine. Now, originally my plan was to install Windows on this machine over with a PC that has an NVMe slot, but as of right now, I haven't gotten that to work. It doesn't seem to be able to boot off of this device. And there are also some other tricky issues that will have to be overcome just by nature of using Bootcamp and Windows on this machine at all. Bootcamp used to have a really useful tool that was built right into the tray on the right hand side and you could just click it and restart into macOS. However, because Apple is Apple, since macOS High Sierra, you have to use the boot switcher if you want to switch back and forth. Now I can confirm that that tool is not working on this computer. It stopped working in High Sierra. It does not work in Mojave. Uh, I do have a bootcamp partition on my one terabyte SSD and it is not working to switch back into Mac OS. Now, this is a weird thing for Apple to do because the only real Macs that would be hurt by them switching to this are these 5,1 Mac Pros. So it seems almost like they're targeting these Mac Pro users and trying to make it more difficult for them to use their machines, which actually sounds about right for Apple. Anyway, there are some ways to get around this. If you do a PRAM reset, which takes about 10 minutes, it will switch back to Mac OS as the default boot drive. You can also use the boot switcher even though you can't see it. So if you wait for the startup chime, then hold down option, and then wait for about 30 seconds and then tap one of the arrow keys. Obviously you can't see it, but that should get you back into macOS. It took me about eight hours to get to this point. 
So it was definitely not a fun day. And I can tell you straight off the bat, if you are someone who is looking to do an upgrade to this Mac Pro and you don't care about Windows, your life is gonna be a lot easier because all you have to do is put in an NVMe SSD, upgrade to Mojave, install it on the SSD, and you're pretty much good to go. It's a lot easier if you don't wanna mess around with Windows, but it can get complicated. Now, this definitely wasn't a tutorial, and I didn't give you step-by-steps. So this was mainly meant to show you the journey that I went through in order to get this machine configured the way that I want it to be configured. The other stuff that I'm gonna have ready for this machine hopefully will be more follow along at home a bull, but this was mainly just so you guys could see what I had to deal with in getting this machine to work. It's not exactly smooth sailing every step of the way. So I hope you guys enjoyed. As usual, thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, at Luke Miani, and please consider joining my subreddit if you have any questions. If, for example, you are trying to get Mac and Windows to work on your 5.1 Mac Pro. And with that, I will see you all in the next video.